Christian Whiten is the principal at DC International Advisory, joining us from Los Angeles, California. Christian, good evening to you. Um, it's a heck of a time. Howdy, Bertie. How's it going? To be launching. It's good. Uh, very good, Christian, and good to see you. It's a heck of a time, isn't it, to be launching a new big warship? And I realize it's not an aircraft carrier, but I mean, the scenes of Abe sitting, posing for photographs, sitting in an old fighter jet marked 731, reminiscent of the infamous Unit 731 during the war is still fresh in many people's minds. This, can, it, it, this can't be any good for multilateral relations. Right, but of course, as far as the naval buildup goes, Japan is still quite far behind Beijing in the region. Uh, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that naval procurement takes a really, really long time. The ship was ordered and laid down um, the, at the end of the last decade into the previous government, so the timing wasn't really planned to coincide with the kerfuffle lately. Right. Um, what do you, uh, you know, what's uh, I, I, the, 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 the good thing about this is China and Japan have been talking. It's not like they won't pick up the phone. It's not like they're ignoring each other. Um, and some of the skirmishes in the oceans have sort of come down. The boil has come off the boil a little bit. There have been some relatively high level exchanges between the two. And Mr. Abe uh, has attempted to extend an olive branch. Is this going to amount to anything? You know, I think so. What Beijing really needs is some sort of firmness from the outside world. It's been getting away with almost unlimited cyber war, uh, economic war in some respects, pushing on all of its maritime and even land neighbors, including India. Uh, so to get some sort of pushback actually, I think, will help frame Beijing's mind toward the limits of what it can get away with. And oddly, there's more acrimony between the two U.S. allies in the region, Japan and South Korea, two democracies, than there is between Beijing and Tokyo right now, it would seem. Right. Um, do you, uh, you know, one, uh, one, one gets the sense that, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the crisis situation, that might be overstating it, but the crisis situation in China in terms of dealing with its economy and making sure that, you know, growth doesn't uh, fall apart at the seams, that perhaps there's been a fundamental or some sort of a paradigm shift in tension to that, and they really don't need a distraction of political saber rattling. Do you get that sense at all, Christian, or is it, is it always there simmering just beneath the, uh, beneath the surface? I think it's always beneath the surface when you have a government that, uh, you know, frankly doesn't have legitimacy that democracies have. And so if you're in Tokyo, if you're in Taipei, uh, if you're an American commander back in Honolulu, you have to worry that economic tension actually will accelerate political and military tension just because, um, you know, the saying goes that a country doesn't, that doesn't respect the rights of its uh, own people won't respect the rights of his neighbors. And frankly, uh, you know, dictatorships have a tendency to rile up nationalist passions when they're in trouble on other fronts as a way to shore up their legitimacy. So the concern being that economic turbulence could rapidly lead to political turbulence that then you know, other U.S. allies would have to deal with. You know, Christian, the, uh, the public opinion polls in Japan have pretty uh, consistently shown uh, that people want Mr. Abe to fix their economic lives, uh, you know, get the economy going, sort of a last gasp after over 20 years, but things like, you know, th passions of his, like redoing the pacifist constitution and the nationalistic slant, which was unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, highlighted again recently by Taro Asho, who made some unfortunate comments, uh, you know, uh, uh, making analogies to the uh, constitutional revision from the Weimar Republic by the Third Reich didn't help anything. But I mean, there, that, that sort of stuff is really secondary, tertiary. To the people. I mean, I get the, the people are still pacifists, aren't they? They don't. They, they don't want trouble. They want a better country. They want a better economy for themselves. Right. I think you see that consistently, um, really, around the world. And that is the source of Abe's popularity. I think, you know, a healthy nationalism is at play here. And more significant, perhaps, in the near term than potentially changing the past constitution, is the creation of a U.S.-style National Security Council in Japan, something that Abe is moving ahead with. That's an, it's a new move for Japan. It would centralize decision-making, make the country more decisive in security issues, and centralize some intelligence functions. But ultimately, Abe uh, popularity stems from you know the turnaround in the near term we've seen from the economy and then of course now the question is whether big reforms will follow the uh, monetary stimulus that's been effective so far. Christian, always great talking to you. Have a good rest of your uh, evening over there, okay? Uh, make a date soon.